As humanists, we often talk about building a heaven on earth. I mean, the entire philosophy is built around that concept to some degree, right? By working together and setting aside hopes of supernatural intervention, we can answer our own prayers as well as one another's. And honestly, the enterprise of proving it has been pretty successful up to this point, right? The world improves pretty quick, but it's been going for so long that it's easy for us to lose sight of just how far things have really moved. We consistently underestimate our progress, which is evidenced by the fact that we always talk about this heaven on earth that we're going to build, and we only rarely bother to talk about the one that we've already built. Now, let me be super clear up front here. I am not claiming the present world is a paradise. That would be a damn hard claim to make in any year, but 2020 seems to be going out of its way to prove the opposite. There are a lot of problems we have to solve, and even if we manage to solve all of the ones we know about, we still wouldn't have a paradise. Even if we manage to stamp out all the racism and bigotry and sexism and hunger and want and disease and discomfort, we still wouldn't be in paradise because paradise is a relative term, even if the dictionary would suggest otherwise. Consider this. The Quran was written in the early 7th century. Now, in this book, its author tries to define heaven. The Bible doesn't go into a hell of a lot of detail on this, but the Quran spells out a few specific ways that you're going to know when you've made it to eternal paradise. And two of the main ones mentioned repeatedly in the book are very comfortable couches, and rivers of milk. Let's set aside for a second how gross a river of milk would be, because clearly the implication here is that, like, you know, that, that milk wouldn't go bad or have bugs and shit in it or froth up with cottage cheese along the shoreline. What Mo was going for here was unlimited supply of milk, right? But even when you give him the benefit of the doubt, that's a really shitty heaven, Right. I mean, I got a lot of shitty stuff to deal with in my life, but I have a very comfortable couch and a glass of milk whenever I want one. My life is literally better than Muhammad was capable of imagining, and I'm just some middle-class white guy on the internet from today, right? In the Bible, they talk about streets of gold or cities made of gold that are also somehow see-through. And to the modern reader, you look at that and you think, wow, that seems wildly impractical, right? That would be a step down. It'd be pretty maybe, but it'd be a step down from what we got. But you have to consider that when this was written, the, the streets were made of mud and camel shit, right? They'd have surely said streets of concrete with good drainage along the sides if they'd known enough to think of that. The green sunny fields that so often stood in for heaven in Renaissance paintings seem pretty drab to most of us now. But when your life was spent knee deep in muck and a front lawn was seen as a symbol of great wealth, just being clean and three feet away from the nearest person probably seemed heavenly. Over the last few centuries, heaven has needed a couple of facelifts. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, odds are you live in a state of abundance that royalty could not dream of a thousand years ago. Your clothes are more comfortable. Your bed is softer. Your lights turn on and off quicker every night than a fucking army of slaves could light and snuff candles. You have endless entertainers at your beck and call, and you have as much milk as you want without even having to bend over to scoop it out of the fucking river. Again, I'm not pointing any of this out to suggest that our work is done and that we've gotten as close to paradise as we need to get. Most of the world would be pretty fired up to have my couches and my access to milk, right? E even most of this country doesn't have the same access to it that my white, male, straight, cisgendered, educated ass has. Our eyes still need to rest on the future, but it helps, it, you know, especially when the present seems so shitty and the future seems so far away to glance back now and again and look at all the ground we've covered.